Welcome back, and today I want to try to get my vintage off-road wrecker running better. Last time when I put the wrecker on the dyno, I noticed that the ignition seemed to be real flaky, and it didn't make anywhere near the amount of power that it should have. So today, let's take a look at the ignition system, see if we can get that fixed up, and then we'll put it back on the dyno and see how much power it makes. So if we look under the hood, you can see the power steering pump that I added. And then back here, this truck used to be 24 volts originally. And so a 12 volt distributor for um, a different type of Chrysler car has been added. And then a 12 volt coil has also been put in here. I am planning on putting electronic ignition on here. So I'll also have to remove the ballast resistor. But for now, let's get the distributor cap off, get the points out, and see if the electronic ignition that I bought is going to work. So I'm going to take the points out next. I have this little magnet. I'm going to slide that over my screwdriver. Now with the magnet over the screwdriver, it should be able to grip onto all the little screws and not let them drop. Well, I didn't want to have to take the distributor out, but it looks like I'm going to have to. So I'm going to make a couple marks here. I'm going to take a paint marker and mark exactly where the rotor is pointing on the distributor itself. Make a little mark there. You can see that mark right there. That's where the, the rotor was pointing. Then I'm going to make a, a mark on the block here. So I made a couple marks there so I can line the distributor back up. Also my dot there so I can line the rotor back up. That should get my timing pretty close to where it was when I put it back together. So I need to disconnect my vacuum line for the vacuum advance. And that of course is frozen. So I'm gonna use a little bit of WD-40 on it. Looks like I need to hold that in place. There we go, now the pipe is loosening up. All right, now let's see if the distributor will come out. Let's get this over to the bench, see if we can get it apart. So here we can see this is a flat headed screw here. I don't know why I was having trouble getting that out of there. But normally points are a lot easier to change in this because points are, are a service item that you would be changing probably the most often on an old car. If you were to take a trip across the United States, you'd probably have to change your points once or twice during the trip. So points should be very easy to remove from the distributor and even doing it without taking the distributor out. You can also see the whiteness on this points here and that's why the ignition was not running very well. It, the points had corroded and they needed cleaned. So let's see if we can get these out of here now. The problem is this bar here, which is part of the points, is fastened to the screw, which is riveted to this back plate. Normally, it's a lot easier to remove these than this, but this is a pretty old distributor design. There we go. Now I can get these old points out of here. And now we can take a look at the other side. You can see the other side is burnt in the middle and it also has that white corrosion on it as well. So it'd be good to get all of this stuff out of here. Go with something that's a little more reliable. I will be putting new wires that run into the distributor so I can just pull this one out. This distributor feels in pretty good shape. There's no play in the shaft. It spins pretty freely. I don't know if you can see that. You can barely see the springs for the centripetal weight down there. And of course we have our vacuum advance right here, which does seem to move freely. Here's the Pertronics unit that I'm going to be using. This is the Chrysler six cylinder industrial unit. It looks like possibly it's going to fit about like that. So I need to remove this points plate, which means I'll need to drill out those two rivets. And 
Now you can see that the original hole that held the points on does line up here. Now I need to attach a ground wire. There we go, the ground is in place. Then I can run my new wiring outside of the distributor. Looks like the grommet they're using is not quite the right size for my distributor. So I'm going to use a zip tie to hold it in place. And I don't want these wires to get caught in the rotor. So I'm also going to zip tie them together. The last thing to do is to put on the sensor sleeve. This has little bumps on the inside that correspond to the old cam. There we go. Now I can put it back in the truck. I don't know if I can get my camera to focus on this, but on the drive for the distributor, you can see that tab is closer to one side than the other. So that means the distributor can only line up in one position, which makes that a lot easier to get back in the right spot. If this actually had a gear on the bottom of it, uh, like a lot of Fords are, you'd have to make sure that you're on the right tooth when reinserting it. But on this one, this drive can only match up one way when putting this back in. Okay, it's hard to see, but my rotor is pointing to my spot here. And my lines are lined up right there. So now I can bolt the distributor back down. Now, in order to use the Protronics, I need to pull this coil out. I'll need to measure it and see if it will work with the Protronics. And I also need to wire this to not use the ballast resistor. The coil doesn't say what impedance it is. It just says use with external resistor. So I'm going to replace it anyways, but let's measure it and see if it is a coil that could have been used with this Pertronic system. This is a Pertronix Igniter 2 system and it says that our coil must be 0.45 ohms or greater. And the recommended coil for this is the 45011, which is a three ohm coil, which I have right here. So let's measure our old coil and find out what it is. So I'll switch the multimeter to ohms. Then if I go between the two terminals, this coil is 1.4 ohms. So we could have used this coil. Now, Pertronics is claiming that this is a three ohm coil. Let's just measure it and see what it comes out to. Three point oh three ohms. So almost right on the money. Let's go ahead and put in the new Pertronics one. I'll label what this one was and I can use it in another project. Finishing the wiring for this is pretty easy. I have a red and black wire. The red wire I'm going to cut and put terminals on to go onto the positive of the coil. The black will connect to the negative of the coil. And then over here at my ballast resistor, this wire right here used to go to the coil. So this is going to get removed completely. And then this is my power going into the ballast resistor. This wire here is going to need to run to the positive of the coil. And then my wiring's done. It's that easy. All right, here's the final project. My black wire, my red wire, everything's in some nice wire wrapping. And then everything comes over here. You can see both connectors on the ballast resistor are disconnected and my power is just wired straight up to the wire. Only thing to do now is to start the engine and see if I did it right. Now that 
it's running again, let's put it back on the dyno and see if it runs any better. If you see that white dot on that triangular pointer right in the middle of the screen there, I've marked my timing indicator. And then also on the pulley itself, I have marked top dead center. And that's because my timing light allows me to actually program in the number of degrees that I want to set my timing to. So I'm able to do that just off of the top dead center and I don't have to worry about any of the other timing marks. So I've checked the timing and I've set it to two degrees before top dead center. Let's get it on the dyno and see what it does. I have the truck on the dyno and ready to run. If we look back at last time, most I made was 44 and a half horsepower, which is this graph down here. So that is the number to beat. And I was thinking that I was having an ignition problem because the minute I hooked up the tack rating for the dyno, it was bouncing all over the place. So let's get it fired up and see if it looks any different now. Okay, let's get fired up. If we look over at the screen, it's about a steady 650 RPM. So it looks like it fixed the ignition problem. Let's run it again. Actually, it looks like the engine did not make any more power that time. It's pretty much doing exactly the same as it was before, but at least now we know that the ignition is working correctly. And if you take into consideration the way that they used to calculate power, this engine should only make about 70 horsepower anyways. Those numbers were far exaggerated from what they actually were. And then all the drivetrain losses and my big tires maybe 45 horsepower at the rear wheels is not that unreasonable for this truck i've been driving it around for a year now and i also bought it from a place that specializes in power wagons and they didn't think that there was anything wrong with it so pretty interesting it really goes to show that gearing means everything and this engine makes three times the amount of torque as it does horsepower i think that's pretty interesting to find that this truck is probably making about 65 horsepower at its engine. Considering this truck just has an old worn out six cylinder flathead under the hood, I don't think that's too bad. Those numbers sound really small today, but back then this was a pretty powerful engine. I already have parts on order for more upgrades to this truck. Some of the changes that I have in mind are putting in some lockers, upgrading the brake system, and also doing a little bit of upgrading on the boom. So if you want to see more videos with the Vintage Off-Road Wrecker, comment below and click subscribe.